Hey everyone, welcome back to Returning to Basics. I'm at home today in the studio and I'm dealing with something that a lot of us who are habitat managers and people who work on our properties, who plant trees, have to deal with, particularly if you are in what we call the southwestern United States. And that's sun scald. We're going to talk about that today. I have in my hand a product that some of you may have used, but if you haven't, you need to become familiar with something like this. And it's tree tubes. I buy them online in these two packs. And I use these spiral tubes like this because they are adjustable. <clears throat> Excuse me. They slip right around the edge of a tree and you can just wrap them right around there. You can even cut them off if they're too long. But these are very important and you may wonder why are these important? Well, remember how much time and effort you put into planting, say, your apple trees, for example. On my place up at Dogwood Trace in the Ozarks, I have apples, I have pears, I have plums, and I have, I have some persimmons, I have chestnut trees. And so all of those that I put out, they're nursery stock, they're small, uh, they, you know, to be able to afford trees, and I have crab apples even, by the way, to be able to afford trees, you can't spend $50 a tree. At least I can't. And so I'm buying $6 trees and $2 trees and, and small trees that when you get them, they're 12 inches to 24 inches tall. And they're the, about, about the size of a pencil, maybe. They're often bare root stock. And so that's what I'm working with. And I'm planting those, and they're very susceptible to this phenomenon called sun scald. Sun scald is where in the winter when the tree goes into dormancy all of the sap goes down into the root ball and it's it's down below and if you get a day where you have a warm day the sun uh, on the southwestern side of the tree is hotter than it is on the northern side and the rest of the tree and it will activate those cells out of dormancy and Fluids will begin to move and uh, they'll get above freezing. And if they don't get dormant again before the end of the day, before nightfall, oftentimes those cells will freeze. And when they freeze, they die. And then you have sun scald and you have damage to your tree. It's particularly uh, something that happens when these trees are small with thin bark. And there's a number of ways that you can resolve it. And you've probably seen this before. You've driven around and you've seen someone literally paint the bottom of their trees white. And you think, what are they doing? Well, they're not doing it to make them look better. <laughs> Obviously, because they don't look better. They're doing it to protect them from sun scald. They're also possibly doing it to protect them from insect damage. But... That's usually why they're doing it, is to protect them from sun scald. And there's three ways that you can protect your trees. You can paint them. And if you choose to paint them, uh, and, and let's call this number one, paint them. If you choose to paint them, use interior latex paint. And most people dilute it 50% with water and paint. And kind of make a whitewash out of it. And why do you choose to use interior paint? Why wouldn't you use exterior paint because we're painting a tree outside and we'd want it to have the most protection possible? Well, there's some additives in exterior latex paint that can literally hurt your tree. So there's certain chemicals in there. So be sure and use interior paint because it's free of those chemicals. They don't put them in there and it's like anti-mold and different, different things that could actually hurt your trees. So be sure and choose an interior latex to paint your exterior trees. And you want to paint about two to three feet down the bottom part of your tree, all the way down to the soil level, and maybe even uh, rake away some of the soil and paint it on down past that. 
and you want to make sure that you get good coverage because you do want not only to protect it from sun scald, you also want to put a seal around it to protect it from any type of boring insects. But for that reason, I, I like to use option number two or particularly option number three. And option number two is to wrap your tree with a light colored tree wrap. Most people wrap it with a white uh, tree wrap of sorts. And you can do that as well. And that's a little better protection from boring insects and particularly also from then rodents at, or rabbits. Rabbits are really bad about gnawing on the bases of, particularly of fruit trees because the, the bark particularly is pleasing to them. But they'll gnaw on the bottom of your fruit tree and they will literally ruin your fruit tree, possibly even kill it. And so, you, you know, you spend too much time if you're like me, we spend too much time, too much money investing in our trees and too much effort trying to keep them uh, uh, pruned, keep them you know, protected from other things. I put up netting around them uh, to keep the deer out. I put tea posts around them and, and poultry wire around all of my trees to keep the deer away from them, from rubbing them and from eating on them and I fertilize and water them. And so there's a lot of investment in trying to get these trees up. And if you're like me and you have close to 40, uh, and some of you have even more, and I have close to 40 on my place that I've planted over the past five years. That's a lot of trees and it's a big investment. And I have more trees coming and, I, and if you know, you've watched my most recent videos, I've even planted uh, some recently. I planted five chestnuts and one damson plum the other day up there and so I continue to expand my orchard and make that investment but option number three is the one that I really like and that is using uh, tree tubes and I choose to use these spiral tree tubes as opposed to the uh, ones that are solid for a couple of reasons one they're easy to put on and they're easy to take off and they're also a bit more ventilated than the other ones and you can uh, have some positive results from the solid tree tubes and some negative results. The positives are that they work like a uh, greenhouse to literally uh, hold in moisture but that also can be a negative because you can have some mold issues and some mildew issues with too much moisture. These hold in a bit of moisture but they allow for ventilation. They have some holes in there for them to breathe and obviously on the the little spirals where they don't connect they can breathe but they also expand where the solid ones do not and so I've literally had these on trees and uh, I had it on a pine tree to try and keep the deer from rubbing on the pine tree and I took one off the other day and it was so big at the bottom that it had expanded out like this but the great news is it was able to allow it to expand because it's this spiral type of tube. And you can also then remove it easily without having to cut it off and ruin it. You can just unscrew it from the tree and put it on another tree. You only need these on trees, according to most horticulturalists and from what I read uh, from the USDA and forestry commissions, two to three years. I think you need to keep them on there as long as they are not choking the tree to the point that you begin to, they begin to expand and, and you can tell that they're full and then I think you should take them off. And then you can reuse them on your new trees. So today I'm going to put these on my two uh, plum trees that I have here in the yard at the house because I only put small portions, I only had a couple of pieces left whenever I planted those to keep the rabbits from them. But here it is in winter, and I want to make sure that they don't get sun scald. So I'm going to install two full-length ones, 24 inches, on my two uh, plum trees here today. So you might want to go outside with me. Okay, here we are at my Santa Rosa plum trees. Hit one here and one right over there. As you can see, we put a little bit of this uh, 
spiral tree wrap around it, tree tube, before. I'm going to rake the mulch back, get it out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. There's my crown. I'm going to give it a little drink. Even though we're here in the winter, we've had rain. Keep it good and watered. And as I suspected, that's not quite tall enough. There we go. Take my bypass pruners, prune that one limb out of the way. Now I have plenty of room. And this is how you do it. It's that simple. You just turn it and wrap it right there on the tree. Kind of like a corkscrew. There we go. Now then. Cover that up. That prevents the rabbits from being able to get down there to the bottom of the tree and gnawing on it. It also protects the tree for two feet up right there. And now I have my tree fully protected. I don't believe I need to do much more pruning. One little branch there out of the way. I think I'm good. And I'll leave that on there until it begins to fully fill that thing out, which is an inch and a half. And then I'll even let it go until it begins to spread out a little bit more because I really want this plum tree to survive and do well. So I'll do my other one the same way. And then I'll go and look at my apples over here because I think I have a little sun scald on my apple. All right, tree number two. And I'm using a good pair, good pair of bypass pruners. These are Black & Decker's. I bought them in a flea market actually, but they're all metal and they're very good. And I think bypass pruners are better for pruning than uh, anvil pruners because anvil pruners actually pinch. There we go. Give it a good drink. And tree number two is protected as well from sun scald and from the uh, rodents and rabbits chewing on the bark. Let's go look at our apples. I want to get these off. Down here at the bottom. Inside there, I don't want anything on the inside. This one's growing on the inside. This one is as well. I want to keep my inside open. I'm going to take this branch off right here. there. Keep my inside open so that it can grow kind of in that basket formation. Let's look at this second tree here. Take anything on the inside out of it. And I know if you're like me it's difficult to cut anything off of a tree. <laughs> It really bothers me, but I know that it's for the best of the tree if we keep it pruned. That's an inside branch. It's going to be a problem. There we go. Here's what I decided to do to my apple trees. I did actually put those spiral tree tubes around the bottom because they're adjustable. And so I was able to put one on the bottom of each of those apples. 
and protect the bases down there from not only sun scald, but also from rabbits that could potentially chew on the bark. Well, there you go. You know, our investment in our trees is very important to us. I know it is to me, and I'm sure that it is to you. So, thanks for coming with me as I put those uh, tree tubes on my new fruit trees here in the yard. They're going into their second year, my plum trees. And I have put them out on all of my trees up at Dogwood Trace, or I have either painted them. And so, you saw me do some pruning on my apples and on my plums. If you have any suggestions for improving those trees, for pruning them better, or, or any suggestions that you have about helping with fruit trees and mass trees, please comment below and let me know. Thanks a million. Thanks for taking the time to be on our channel. God bless you and have a great day.